in depth would be formed and the volume of the target melted would be 4,440 kilometers cubed. An earthquake measuring 10.1 on the Richter scale would occur, this being the largest in history. Most of the debris from the collision would rain back down on Earth, heating the atmosphere until the temperature would feel like the inside of an oven. This would trigger forest fires, forest fires that would reduce anything not underground to ash. Dust from the impact and soot from the forest fires would fill Earth's atmosphere for about a year, blocking light from the sun. This would cause much of Earth's plant life, land, and sea to die. Enormous tsunamis would be formed due to the huge earthquake, and many floods would occur due to the tsunami. Many species of animals would die out, possibly including humans, due to the impact, lack of food, or devastation of the environment. As you can see, the effects of an asteroid collision with Earth would be extremely destructive. Thankfully, our team of experts at CAFE will save the planet and the human race. Honey, it was so hot at work today, I thought I was going to melt. I need to cool off. I hate to tell you the sweaty, I mean sweetie, but our air conditioner is on the fritz. I'm gonna be joking. I'm not. It only blows out hot air. I told you months ago to buy the new Pluto PT7659 air conditioner. We need to go to Tilly Plutonium air conditioners right now. Let's go. My love. Yeah. Hi, what can I do for you today? My husband is melting. We need an air conditioner quick. Okay, while well, your husband cools off in the freezer room. I will tell you about the Pluto PT7659 air conditioner. Lovely. Pluto PT7659 um, is an air conditioner that has 35,000 BTU and only uses 7 amps of power. It's guaranteed not to blow the fuses in your apartment. Not only will it cool your whole entire apartment, but it will restore the man, your husband, to the man you married. If your marriage is next, please call us at 1-800-ARE-YOU-HOT or visit us at the web at www.plutosfreezing.com And we're back. Please welcome Dr. Andrea Gold, who is here to speak with us about some of the fantastic ideas and plants that make CAFE so trustworthy. Thank you very much. Dr. Gold, now that we know that an asteroid is heading towards Earth, can you tell us more about this asteroid and where it's landing? An asteroid, 10 kilometers in diameter, is heading to, at the Yukon Territory in Canada, traveling at a speed of 30 kilometers per second at a 45 degree angle. Its density is believed to be 3,000 kilograms, a typical density for a dense rock this size, which is what the asteroid is made of. It is headed for land, thankfully, and not water. Once it hits, the asteroid will form a crater measuring 90.6 miles or 146 kilometers in diameter and 0.824 miles or 1.33 kilometers in depth. Pretty big, isn't it? Huge. Now, as CAFE, what will you do to stop it and protect Earth and the residents of Yukon? We at CAFE headquarters have a special name for our defense plan. We call it Melt Away, but let's think of it as the microwave plan. Microwave? The microwave plan is sort of like digesting food. Think about it for a second. Your teeth break up the food, cutting the food into small digestible pieces. Now, our plan applies the area of science concerning microwaves to the physical structure of the asteroid. Our plan is to create a device that can project microwaves. Now let's go back to digesting food. If you think of the waves that our microwave emits as teeth, the asteroid as food, and Earth's atmosphere as your digestive system, there's our plan. Microwaves travel intact through space in large quantities. The rays will reach the asteroid from the machine, causing the asteroid to heat up at the center at an extremely high temperature. This will assist the atmosphere to dissolve the asteroid, because as the outer part dissolves, the interior will be already extremely heated. 
The asteroid will break up harmlessly in the atmosphere and Earth will not be affected by it. This is a diagram of the defense plan that I just discussed with you. This is a satellite connecting to our microwave transmitter. It runs on nuclear power, but has solar panels in case of emergencies. This transmitter will take out microwaves, and this is our asteroid. You can see the interior of the asteroid here. It has, it's lined because it's getting heated up. Now, as the asteroid comes into Earth, it'll burn up in the atmosphere harmlessly. And you might have a meteor shower or two, but nothing major. Sounds like a really, really good plan. But how will you attain the money to fund for it? Well, NASA is, very generously, contributing a lot of money in order to build the machine and make this plan work. New businesses in outer space have also opened on various planets, and the profits will go towards the defense plan. We have created a business guide of these new businesses, which will be shown to you later during today's show. We will also be doubling the taxes of residents of Yukon. Every resident of Yukon will be taxed, since this is the area that will be affected by most by the asteroid. Nobody likes taxes, but hey, we need the money so we can save your lives. Now, let's say your plan fails and you have six months until the collision. What will you do? We have an excellent evacuation plan. We will have a space station built on the moon to comfort comfortably accommodate 40,000 people. During the six months we have to carry out our evacuation plan, the people who are going to be evacuated will be given extensive astronaut training at NASA's training center and will be trained by experienced astronauts. Five days before the asteroid will hit, the residents of Yukon will be loaded onto many space shuttles provided by NASA that will take them to the space station we built on the moon. How long will the trip to the space station take? Well, it'll probably take four to five days. Three at least. Quick question. How would you manage to build a space station so large that it can comfortably fit 40,000 people? Well, you know, we, I'm not sure if, you know, well, um, oh dear. Hold on a sec. Yeah, hi? Can we tell them? Okay. We have been building a space station able to fit over 40,000 people with facilities, bedrooms, dining rooms, and libraries for the past 20 years in secret. We knew something like this would have to happen eventually, and we needed to be prepared for it when or if it did. Even if it wasn't needed, it would be a great addition whether used as a vast expansion, expansion of the space station we use today, or even as a new way of vacationing. The space station is almost complete and will be ready in time for the possible evacuation. Of course, we hope our defense plan will work, but if it doesn't, we have an excellent backup plan. What will be brought along to be used as food and how will you attain it? Specially packaged meals will be available to the evacuees. These meals consist of food that are specially treated in order to preserve them and prevent bacteria from growing on them, such as fruits, yogurts, and meats, like steak. Macaroni, cheese, and eggs will also be brought along, dehydrated. They can be eaten in space by pouring water on them. Of course, water will be brought along as well. Granola and nuts will be brought along too and do not need to be treated. Hot foods and bread, however, will not be brought along because they are dangerous when in space. Utensils, such as forks, knives, spoons, and in this case, scissors, will also be brought along. NASA is, once again, contributing all of the treated and packaged food. They have a large supply, since this is the food that astronauts eat in space. We will have a couple of space shuttles filled with only food, and we can assure you that enough will be brought. How will the money to carry out this plan be attained? In the same way, we will raise money for the defense plan. NASA is contributing, new businesses are opening in outer space, and we are doubling the taxes of Yukon residents. If the evacuation were to happen, how many people would need to be evacuated? There are 
32,442 people living in the Yukon Territory. They will all be evacuated. Yukon Territory is 186,661 square miles. Only 1,070 square miles are expected to be completely destroyed in the Yukon Territory. Nevertheless, everyone will be evacuated due to safety and health reasons. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Galtz. Cafe's plans are excellent and will no doubt be successful. Thank you. If there are any more questions on the plan, you can reach me at andreagaltz at cafe.net or simply look up the plans on www.cafe.net. We'll be back after these short messages. Coming up, grab a buck and help the cause. The new business is in outer space. <laughs> 